Women have power, they have intelligence that we aren't using because, after all, there's nothing worse than the nerdy myth. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think a lot of these things and these myths and a lot of it's been, you know, perpetuated through the media, through movies, through culture, through Wait a music. minute, a lot of it's been perpetuated through religion. And through religion, yeah. And come on, we don't, yeah, through we, religion. we don't want to admit that perhaps, perhaps what we're dealing with is too many years of a religion based on the superiority of that white male that wasn't white. not a teacher. Teachers dispense facts and figures in order to get kids ready for the end of your testing and for more of the same. That's not what I do. I leave people out of ignorance, people of all ages. So be careful about how you pronounce that word. Okay. Words have power and you should use them properly and carefully and you should pronounce them correctly. Okay. And we've had lots of presidents who said education. W. Constantly said education. Well, Somebody needed to take him aside and say, W, the word is education. The religious aspect of it, but we did have a good time for two weeks every year. I'll never forget the year the minister came out to get us to go to church, to Bible school. And I was really, I was really little. Mm -hmm. And he said, may I pray for you? And my good Catholic mother said, yeah, that's right. So he knelt down. Unfortunately for him, he knelt on a roller skate. He knelt on one knee when I was over and he skilled it across the floor. And I remember standing behind my mother. I couldn't think about this though. And I was, she said, you stop that. I mean, don't you laugh. And I was like, this is funny. It was, he should, I thought at the time, he really should have prayed not to have that happen to him. <laughs> <laughs> he should have prayed before he went out. Yes, he should have. Yeah. <laughs> with his dignity no longer intact. And he didn't really really urge us to come to his vacation Bible school. How would it have sounded to the teachers if we had said, <laughs> he's the guy that doesn't want to the wine on the street. But that was, that's one, of my, that's one of my first memories of religious training. Mm -hmm. A minister kneeling on a roller skate and scooting across the floor while he's praying for us. So how do you interpret that now as I, I think I interpret that as God was trying to send him a message, leave this family alone. Their father's teaching him the rudiments of how to live a, a righteous life. Leave them alone. Let's my father says, stop put a stone in here. You are listening to the voice of novelist, author, poet, Lamont Anthony Wright, also known as Graffiti Blue. I know you are here to absorb the vast wisdom of educator Jane Elliott, a woman I have had the pleasure of meeting, speaking to, and the pleasure of filming. Off camera, I found her to be amazingly grounded, compassionate, and considerate, especially considering her level of celebrity. Upon Miss Elliott's request, she did not want me to edit her conversation with Rachel McKinley out of context. So outside of the beginning of this conversation already uploaded to this channel titled Jane Elliott, Race, Religion, and Education that had edits panning back and forth, but nothing out of context. This video is a single perspective played straight through to better accommodate the verbal agreement between Miss Elliott and I, which allowed me to have the content on this channel. Now, whether you're a follower of her crusade or not, I truly hope you listen to her wisdom with an open ear and a receiving heart. And I said, you do not judge a book by its cover. And you do not judge someone until you've walked in his life, in his world. He just, he, he judge not, but that you be not judged for my father's house. That's the way he believed, and, that's, and you never tell a lie. The worst thing you could do was tell a lie to my father. I don't have my father find out that you told a lie. He would never tell a lie, and my mother never bothered about the truth. It was, it was a really interesting um, upbringing, because he was, this is right. And he'd say to us, you know the difference between right and wrong, goddammit, I do the right thing. And so you didn't do the wrong thing because you said your father said not. He kept me out of love. So do you feel like your father, see, I don't have that. So I've had to learn. That's too bad. I've had to learn. It's been, and my mom has suffered from PTSD. And so it's been really difficult growing up and figuring out who I am. Like, I've had to go through a lot of trial and error yep, yep. and, like, really some deep soul searching to be where I'm at today. Like, you had to really raise cold. yourself. Yeah, I've had to raise myself. And so I have, like, the eternal mother and father inside yep. of me that I go 
go-to for advice, yeah. and I listen to it, and I sit with my body, and I sit still, and <clears throat> it's been pretty difficult, but, but, but I was... Read, read anything that Harry Golden ever wrote. Okay. If you don't have a father, mm -hmm. read anything Harry Golden ever wrote. Um, Only in America for two cents playing, enjoy, enjoy. Harry Golden was a Jewish editor, and he called his, he called his newspaper, I think, the South Carolina Israelite. I think that's what it was. Harry but Golden. Harry Golden. You that's should funny. read. That's what my grandmother's name last name. Oh my goodness. Well, you should read everything Harry Golden ever wrote because what he wrote, he wrote this newspaper and he took pieces of it out and pieces of it and put them in three books. What he wrote is what my, what, what my father lived. My father's father quoted poor Richard's almanac all the time. Okay. So that's what my dad said to us. Okay. And he was right. And his dad was right. Mm -hmm. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, without a father, that's really difficult. But I know people, children who have fathers, who would be better off with a book, quite frankly. I know that too. Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 it's unfortunate <clears throat> that you don't have a father and that your mother was rather, they, was rather absent. Mm -hmm. But uh, you can self-educate. And you know you can. I've done it, yeah. and I keep doing it. Yeah. And I, 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 I even sometimes even have that whole like the imposter problem, like the I'm not worthy of being educated or being more than what what to, you know what society. According, according to who? Who's telling you that? It's my own. Well, then you need to stop. You need to stop doing that. Yeah. You need to get a rubber band. And I said that teacher. I actually had a teacher tell me that I was going to grow up and not be. Anything oh, cool. because I challenged his uh -huh. ethics and oh, his yeah. morals. Because he just was so rude. Yeah. And he, he smelled like cigarettes. Yeah. And he had bad breath. And he would get so close to you. And it was like, uh -huh. this is so rude. <laughs> I had so he just was rude. And I just didn't tolerate it. I was an outspoken child. Bad thing to be. In but I was only outspoken when I felt that it was absolutely necessary to say something because I had to protect myself. And so I knew that I had to protect myself and my energy and that this person was not giving me something good and I needed to kind of give them something back to, <laughs> to like teach them like, you're not going to do that to me, you know, because I, I'm not going to allow you to disrespect me I had a high school principal like that many, many years ago. And uh, he and I were at loggerheads all the time. I was always in trouble with him. And about four years, four or five years ago, he came to our class reunion. Mm -hmm. And over there, on that side of the room, he said, uh, Jay, can I talk to you for a minute? I said, sure, Mr. Wolf, what do you need? Mm -hmm. And he said, I made a lot of mistakes as a principal. And I said a lot of things I shouldn't have said. I said, Mr. Wolf, stop right there. If I had a dime for every time I opened my mouth and I shut up, I'd be a very wealthy person. You don't have to apologize to me. I was a hard person to deal with. He said, well, I want you to need my forgiveness, Mr. Gold. You were a fine, fine teacher. And I will never, what's really funny about that is, I will never forget the day, and he was a veteran in the Second World War. Okay. He went out of the military, went to school on the GI Bill, and came, and came to teach adolescent Simply faced, runny nosed, arrogant little adolescent kids in Northeast Iowa who thought they knew it all. Yeah. And I remember him. And all of our teachers when I was in high school, all the men teachers were veterans of the Second World War. I was the luckiest person in the world. I remember him standing at his desk with one of the drip cat. He opened the bottom drawer of the desk and put his foot on that because it would adjust his spine. He was standing there, you can still see him standing there with a paper clip in his hand. Unlike them, you know, bending that paper clip. And he said, to this class of adolescents, I will never fight in another old man's war and neither will any of my son. Mm. And I thought, that's not very patriotic. And then I grew up and I realized that he was absolutely right. And I told my kids, do not, do not go into the military, particularly if we're in an old man's war and that's what they are. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was opposed and kids going into the military. And then my grandson went into the military about six years ago, eight years ago. Came out of the military a man, went in a boy, and came out a man. And I'm thinking, 
okay, you ain't gonna change your attitude on that. However, I don't want my sons or my grandsons, my great grandsons to fight in another old men's war. But Bob Wolf was right about that. He died several years ago and I was I was glad that he and I had that that moment of we were right. And I was glad I could remember him standing there saying that. That's the best that is the best advice I ever got in high school. I will never fight in another old man's war, and neither will any of my sons. See, none of the people who are in Congress today, practically none of them, have been in the military. We need people in Congress who have been in the military and who know what war is about. And if you read on tyranny, and you read the, the, the uh, chapter on Be a Patriot, you will know why you do not, you do not, allow people to run your, your show who are old men who want to take young men to war. What was your question? I just want to sit with that one for a minute. <laughs> we'll just, we'll just, we'll just well, that. thinking about the military and the, the, the repercussions of young men going to war, like the veterans from Vietnam and how they came back with a severe mental illness, not able to find their way back to themselves or leave. Let's talk about that for a minute. They came back to a country that was mentally ill. They came back to a country, I'll never forget how the Vietnam veteran was in <coughs> none of my workshops. And he didn't want to do anything I told him to. And I said, here's the way it is. You need to do it my way or hit the highway and I don't care which. It, we, had, we had a really interesting experience and I kicked him out and then he, came, he came back in and we finally got to apologize for what he'd done the way he said. Because he, he did the wrong thing. Any place, would, what he did would have been wrong. And after it was over, and we were, we'd gone to lunch, and everybody else was in, the, all the other participants had gone to get ready, ready for the afternoon, and I was getting ready to go back to the to the airport. He was the only one in the room, in the, in the restaurant, in the, the uh, lunchroom, dining room. And he came over and he said, Miss Elliot, uh, can I ask a favor of you? I said, what is it? He said, could I hug you? And my first thought was, because he had said to me, I could put you through that wall with one bowl. I could break every bone in your body with two bowls because I was trained to do that as of Vietnam, in the Vietnam before I went to Vietnam. He had said that during the meeting, and when he said, can I hug you, that's, that was my first thought. And I stood up and I said, I think that would be lovely, thank you. And he hugged me, and he was crying, and I was crying, and he said, I want to thank you for what you did today. I have never talked about any of this, even with my parents. Nobody knows what, I, what I'm thinking and what I've done. I don't even talk about this. I had put my life on hold when I came back from Vietnam. You gave me back my life today. Think of what we did to young men whom old men sent into war, and then we had called them baby killers when they came back. Think of what we did to them. I think PTSD, is less a result of Vietnam than it is of what we did to them when we sent them and then the way we treated them when they came back. So we are responsible for that. We, the people of the United States, are responsible for what happened with those young men. And we are responsible for what we're doing to young men in Afghanistan today. And we are responsible for putting a person in leadership in the United States of America who is willing to do that again, and again, and again, and again, who has today said, today has said, okay. this day okay. has said, we don't want to punish the Saudis for killing an American news journalist because that might cost us all those many dollars we can make off the arms we send to them. Today we said that. This is a man who had bone spurs on his heels, so he didn't have to run the military. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh yeah. Oh, see, <laughs> read on tyranny, the book on be, the chapter on be a patriot. Everybody needs to read that, and then we need to make him more aware that we are aware. Mm -hmm. That those young men who came back from Vietnam were coming back mm -hmm. in ignorance, and they brought back a knowledge that those of us who weren't there and who don't have to go, but who can send them don't have. They know things we'll never learn, if we're lucky. Mm -hmm. But 
it isn't just the ex exactly. today. For just a few minutes, I watched uh, Pearl Harbor. Remember Pearl Harbor with Tom Selleck doing the narration. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Come on now. Anyway. <laughs> Saudi 